Hi everyone, Chris again. A uh, bit of a video for some of the newer players out there today. I thought I'd um, go through a uh, sort of bit of a list run through of the kit that I take to a skirmish. Um, obviously this varies a lot for different people. Um, and there's a few videos on this out there, but uh, I was at a game on Sunday and I've been very lazy because I'm on leave and I haven't unpacked, uh, unpacked all my gear yet. So I thought while I'm doing that I'd, uh, I'd run through what I take just to give... Um, some of the guys out there maybe a bit of an idea, some pointers and suggestions on the sort of you know what what I've found to work over the years uh, from you know the experience of I've had uh, airsoft and basically. So we'll start off with the um, with the actual clothing. Now, as you see here, we've got a sort of underbody armor type shirt, combat shirt. You've got your um, like your standard material for the sleeves, and then thinner t-shirt stuff for the centre. Now, the good thing about these, I find. Now is that um, they're pretty much they're, obviously they're the best option in the summer, and I actually think they're they're good in the winter as well, especially if you're wearing uh, a plate carrier or a chest rig or something that covers up your torso. A lot of people might find that strange for the winter, but honestly, when you when you're airsoft and you're running around a lot, especially if you're indoors like I was, um, you you don't need a lot of layers. You you'll overheat even if it is cold. So. Uh, that, that's my recommendation for, for most of the time. If, if you're outside in the snow, then yeah, by all means, put a couple more layers on maybe. When it comes to the lower half, these are my um, custom made uh, replicas, well, copies, I suppose, of the, the, the Cry ACs, but these are, in a, these are in the MTP. Got a guy to sew these together for me out of some actual MTP trousers. Um, Although, at the end of the day, the trousers you use won't make a massive amount of difference. I always find these built-in knee pads are really the best thing to go with. Um, when it comes to a belt, you want something, if you're going to have like a molly belt that goes around the outside of this, you want a nice low profile buckle like this. This is just literally, um, a, it's called a tri-glide, a bit of plastic hardware that you get on webbing on chest rigs and stuff usually. And it just means that you don't have an actual clip buckle there that sort of bunches up under your um, under your molly belt. Hat, well, baseball cap's always a good option. Um, just doesn't really matter which brand you want, you know, it's all good. Um, I, I, what I wear for face protection most of the time is this, uh, it's basically a combination of some ESS goggles and a... Uh, a, a sort of basic standard rental mask, lower half, done some drilled and painted, cut it up a bit, uh, and then I sort of I wear the cap backwards and the, the elastic strap just goes over that. Gives you a good, protects your teeth, protects your eyes in, you know, CQB, it's fully sealed. I've taken the, the, the foam out, but there's no way a BB will get through there unless you, like someone literally sticks the muzzle of their gun right in there. It's not going to happen. So then, take take a backpack, of course, for all your all your various supplies, gloves. Make sure you get some nice thin gloves. You don't, you know, I mean, unless it is massively cold where you're going, you want to be actually be able to to use the controls on your weapon. Sling. I prefer a one point sling. This is one of sort of the. Uh, put together out of a couple of different slings um, it's based on the idea of the, the Magpul MS2, MS3 and that you can convert from a 1 to a 2 point but generally I think a 1 point is better to go with and if you can get some kind of padding like this one's got a nice thick padded section makes it way more comfortable if my goals were to break and I had to wear some other iPro lower mesh mask just in case I've got my belt kit inside here, belt rig um, got a drop leg holster there, make sure again I think I've mentioned this in other videos but if you'll see there's no there's no real gap between the belt and where the drop leg starts, this is what you want, you want them to ride as high up as possible you see there's not much difference between the, uh, not much distance even between the buckles there you want to ride really high up on your thigh to stop um, any restriction in your leg movement the actual pouches you go with are entirely subjective up to you but I like to have a dump pouch and then a couple of pistol mags there you want them, whichever hand you're going to be reloading with 
you'll want them you know, nice and easy to access. Gas, can of propane. I'm not sure if you can. You can still get propane quite cheap if you look for the look in the right places. I've got, I've got the uh, Soft Innovations adapter on there. Makes it a lot cheaper. And that's in the main section. The other compartment on my bag. Speed loader. I've got another one of these in my gun bag, but just a spare one in case. And I've got another set of gloves. Which is handy fog. It doesn't matter what product you use. Um, I've not actually used any of this stuff for a while, but it helps to have something like that. Some other glove. Batteries. Got some CR123As. Um, if you're running anything with batteries, bring a couple of spare ones along. Gun wheel for when you that goes in the just inside the top of the propane here, because green gas is just propane with a bit of silicon added. So if you just bring a Add a couple of drops every few magazines to your propane. And spare iPro, set of ESS ice shooting specs. Always, always have spare iPro, number one priority. And that's it for the bag. Uh, I, I generally go with a plate carrier, it's my strand hog. And I've got a GP pouch with one of these little. This, um, so you pull this sort of a click click and lock type fresh box for food fits in the pouch just right as you see I can keep my uh, actually uh, it took a couple of hits in the last game well, yeah, there's one but you know it, it looks it looks a lot worse than it is there's not actually any damage it's just aesthetic really perfect it's not even um, still a smooth surface so you can put your phone your wallet your car keys all that in there Put it inside the pouch and then they're safe. You know, no one's going to nick them or anything like that. Um, magazines along the front. If you're running a pistol um, and pistol mags on a belt like I do, keep this part just either side of your mag pouches on the front. Keep that clear so you can draw your pistol up in that area. It's generic. Oh, baby. Generic sort of a. This is a smoke grenade pouch, but you can fit. I actually put a radio in here, but you can put a, a, spare, you know, you put a speed loader like that, or a magazine, like a high cap, or whatever. On the back, another very important bit of kit, hydration carrier, got a uh, two litre inside this one. Always got to have water, uh, you know, if, if, if you don't choose to have it on you, at least make sure you've got some uh, in your kit, because you don't want to be uh, going man down, because of dehydration. So that's that, and let's move on to the actual weapon side of the house. Start off with the handguns. Again, um, as with my primary weapons, I always bring two handguns. So for that game, I chose uh, my TM SIG 226E2. That was the one I used. I've got my, got my light on there. If it's a dark place, make sure you've got a light on, you know, preferably on both of your, your you know, your, your rifle and your pistol. Or, you know, at least make sure you have one and then for compatibility with the magazines, I've got the old version TM SIG, and then uh, three mags in there. There's plenty. I only ever usually use one, maybe two, but just always good to have a backup in case one of them suddenly decides to start pissing out gas. Magazines, magazines from the uh, electric blowback series from Marui. Uh, always bring a few of them. Just bring a couple more than you need. They don't weigh much. Spare lens for the. Uh, for the ESS goggles, main speed loader there, bit of that for loading up the mid caps, bottle of BBs, and uh, batteries. If you're using lipos, makes sense to keep them in a safety bag like that. For a uh, main rifle, got the uh, TM Scar L, the electric blowback, that's good fun to use. Nice short barrel, that's all you need for airsoft, really. Not a massive amount of fancy stuff on there. Got a light because it was a, a dark skirmish site, so it makes sense to have one. Four grip, if you want to use it, use it. Um, by all means, just personal choice. Optic, again, um, you know, I like to have one, just more for the look, if anything. Uh, now, usually, what I'd do is if I was running, um, you know, a rifle like this that uses uses these. Uh, these TM magazines, I'd usually bring two rifles, 
but I thought for a change on, on uh, yesterday's game, not yesterday, over the weekend even, took out my uh, nice cheap spring pump action shotgun. I think it's double eagle, I don't know, they don't cost a lot. Put a bit of Krylon and a little shell caddy on there. Good thing about that is that even though it obviously doesn't use the same magazines and this scar, you don't really need to bring any more. You've, I've got my shell caddy on the side there that carries more than enough ammo, more than enough for a game. So there's no need to bring any extra magazines or anything like that. Nice and lightweight, doesn't weigh the gun bag down. Super simple, very reliable. Uh, you know, as with the handguns, I generally think it's a good idea to have a backup for your primary weapon as well. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So yeah, we've covered um, covered the gear, covered the ammo, clothing, uh, load bearing equipment, primary weapons, secondary weapons. Uh, and yeah, um, a few little pointers in there. Hopefully that was useful, guys. Um, any questions? You know, please do ask. Uh, if you want to check out the Facebook page that I run for this channel, the uh, link will be down in the description. I always put anytime I do a new upload, I put that onto the Facebook. So if you do check your Facebook more than your YouTube, which I do, then uh, have a look at that. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.